Alright, so this is going to be a really quick um, video on how I go about bringing a low poly mesh um, or a low poly model that I've created into Substance Painter to Texture. Um, so I just threw together this really quick um, little like bow staff looking model. Um, it's really low poly. I just basically created a couple cylinders, um, extended them out add a little bit of shape to them so they're not super boring um, and then I add these little uh, kind of like cloth wrap looking things to them um, and that's it, it's, it's really simple um, this is actually a um, a pipe I created a pipe and then I just kind of tweaked it and stretched it out until I was happy with it um, now what I'd probably end up doing is actually taking these two into ZBrush and sculpting them out and making them look nice and cloth-like how they should look and maybe even making them look like, like they're wrapped or something or they have wraps or something on them. Um, and then e exporting them back into here and retopologizing them. Uh, I'm not going to go through that for this. Um, I'm just going to assume that all my detail work is going to be done with textures in Substance Painter but there is a lot more I could be doing um, with uh, these cloth things to make this look a lot better. So the first thing I'm gonna do is um, delete my history just because I know I don't wanna do anything else with these and I'm just gonna freeze my transforms and I'll probably have to, I'm gonna UV them. So um, what I like to do is I like to set my UV editor on the side here so I can center my mesh on the other side. So the way to wait the way the, the, the best way to do that is to set up two different panels um, over here like this, so I can have my um, perspective on the left here, and I'll go like this and choose perspective, and then on the right side I want to have my oh that's weird um, I want this to be my UV editor. Here we go. All right now. Um, UV 101 is basically you always want to keep your UVs in this top right quadrant here 0 to 1, 0 to 1, um, never in the negatives um, unless you want a repeating texture like if you're going to create like a like a I don't know like a floor piece or something like you're modeling a piece or a floor and you want it to repeat you can always use all four of these because it's just going to repeat the texture across but general rule of thumb is unless you know why you want to use all four side, uh, all four quadrants, just use the top right one. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is lay out all these UVs. So if I click and drag on this, I'm gonna, this is all my UVs laid out for these. And they're all overlapping and they're all just default Maya UVs. And if I try to texture these, you're going to get all sorts of uh, stretching and warping. And I can show this example or show that as an example with by clicking on this little check, uh, checkerboard. Um, display checkered tiles button and if I zoom in here you can see how stretched out everything is you can see all these these checkers are all stretched out and they shouldn't be they should be all pretty even but they all look like garbage right now the only thing that looks the only things that look decent is the tops here and that's because they are UV'd okay so um, what I want to do is to start off I'm just gonna click um, UV and I'm just gonna do an automatic map on these that's the fastest way to do it. I'm going to turn off that UV texture and turn off the image here so I can see these better. And that's that's what I'm getting from an automatic. Um, let's switch back to object mode so I can select this again. And I'll even turn on those check checkers again. Now you can see I've got those checkers. They're all laid out a lot better. Um, I've got some seams here so you can see where the checkers don't continue across. you got a seam. Um, that's that's going to cause some issues. In Substance Painter, it's not too bad. You won't have too many issues in Substance Painter with that. But if you were going to hand paint these, this would be this wouldn't be good. You'd you'd end up trying to paint along this edge here, and it would just it wouldn't line up right. Because as you can see, these are the UVs for the tops here, and I can do I can show you by selecting the shell. So I'll select that, and it's obviously it's on this one. So we'll just select. Oh, it's right here. So I can select this shell and you can kind of see it being selected here. Turn this off, you can see better. So that's the shell that goes around there and if I select edges here, I can double click this and you can see this edge here. Well, it wraps around here, but it's also connected over here. So these are all the same edge. So to fix this, what I want to do 
And actually what I'm going to do is, um, that's okay, I'll, sh I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Um, it's, it's always a good thing if you're going to have multiple pieces, like I have two of these wraps here, it's, it's always nice to UV them first and then duplicate them afterward. Um, but if you've already duplicated something like 20 times and you're going, oh man, I don't want to UV all those manually, there's, there's a trick you can use as long as you haven't adjusted them too much. And I'll show you that trick. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you end up having to duplicate all these again once you've got your views, UVs done. Because it's a lot faster to duplicate things than it is to redo all your UVs. Um, so anyway, so what I want to do now is start connecting my stuff together. So I'll select this edge here like down there and I'll just move and so oh I should show you how I did that um, hold down shift right click and up above here is move and sew UVs and that'll just move and snap them together so now they're all one piece and I'm gonna do that as many times as I can to get this in one long straight line now you can see right here if I select one side it selects the opposite side which means that if I do that again it's gonna snap them together and I don't want that I want, it to, I want there to be a seam, but I want to be able to control where that seam is. So right now that seam is right here, and to be honest, it's not that big of a deal, but I'm gonna put this seam right here. So there it is there. I'll hold shift and right click and go over to cut UVs. And if you click right here, you can actually see where your seams are. So that lays them out for you. So now what I can do is now that I have this as a separate shell, because I cut those UVs there, I can move it away if I need to. And, but what I really want to do is actually just grab these and move in so again. So now my, my, I've just laid out my seam exactly where I want it to be. So that looks fine, except now I want to attach these to the top of that. So I can find the same edge here, and there it is there, that's the same edge. So I'll right click and cut th that UV there, and then I can grab it up here too, and it's already cut there, that's good. Um, and now what I can do is grab this edge click here, move and sew, and I know that looks terrible, and that's, oh, you know what, I'm missing a piece, oh no, I'm not, that's good, it looks terrible, but just hang with me, and it'll look better in a second, and I click there, double click there, and I'm moving sew there too, I think I've actually got another edge inside here that's not showing up, I do, but what I'm actually going to do is so I double click that in there, and I'm actually just going to delete these completely. Because I don't you're not going to see them in game, so I don't need it. I don't I don't need it there, so it doesn't matter. And before I do anything further, I notice this is kind of wide. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. I don't care if there's a little bit of overlapping, as long as it's not crazy. Um, but I just don't want too too big of a gap because I don't want anyone to be able to see in there really. There we go. Now, it's okay that I did that because my UVs aren't completely finished, but once your UVs are finished, you don't want to make too many changes like that. Um, adding an edge loop is okay and things like that, but um, making too many changes is going to skew your UVs. Alright, so now I've got that, and what I want to do is um, go to shell mode, so right click and just do shell. And keep in mind, you can only do shell when you're in your UV editor, it doesn't show up in here. So you've got to be over the UV side. Now I can just click and drag over my shell, and I'm going to hit this button here. It looks like a um, an unfolded cube, and what that does is it just magically unfolds my UV for me, so it looks nice and neat. So um, now this is a little bit more advanced, but I'm going to explain it just in case. Now, if you're going to, this looks pretty good. Like if I painted this, it would it would come out pretty good. I don't, I'm not gonna have too many seams. I'm gonna have one seam to worry about if I want to hand paint this. If I want to do it in substance painter, I don't have to worry about it at all. Um, looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Now, if you want to take the next step, what you can do is actually, um, if I was if I was going to paint this, and I say this is gonna be a 512 texture map, which is pretty low, but if it, like you know a 512 by 512 image is a pretty low, you know, pretty pixely looking image. Um, so if I was going to do that, because this is curved here, it's going to use a lot of pixels to get uh, that that line edge there. So in order to use the least amount of pixels I want, and I know this might not make any sense, and if it doesn't, don't worry about it, it's not super important right now. But if I want to use the least amount of pixels as I can, so I have a nice crisp edge there, and I don't have a lot of anti or a, a lot of aliasing, which is just like stair stepping in pixels that I can go up here and use these alignment tools and I can align that there 
and just click and drag across here and hit G for last repeat last action which aligns it again and align it again and align this one and align oh, okay. it's the wrong side. Align that one and then align the very bottom one and now that's what's going to happen is if you draw a pixel line straight across here you know to start painting on this then it is going to show up nice and crisp and clean and you're not going to end up with any um, stair stepping and, and weird pixel shapes now of course you've got to do the same thing on the sides uh, make sure you don't you make sure you do left or right and the insides are not quite as important just so you know the outsides are the most important part so I'm actually just gonna do it on the outsides for this one mainly because I just don't want to go through and do all that now if you don't want to go through and select every single one of these manually sometimes you can double click and get or hold shift and go down and double click but that didn't want to work for me that time so all right, so there we go. So that's that's gonna work fine. And if I want to check my textures or my checkers, and you can see that looks nice and neat, wraps around here nice and clean. I don't have any stretching really. A little tiny bit of stretching right here along the seam. It won't be a big deal. You'll never notice that. Looks pretty good. Now, one thing I did notice is that where, it, if I open up my texture here again, this says U1 V1 right here. Now this is upside down. It's it's not that big of a deal. If you're going to hand paint this, you probably want to flip it around. And you can do that with these buttons here, flip it. You don't want to use these because if you turn this on right here, it's blue, which means it's the right side up. And if I flip this around um, like so, it's going to turn red. Now it's the right way here, but it's red, which means my UVs are reversed. So if I put a normal map on this, they're going to turn inside out. So I don't want that. I just want to rotate it like this. There we go. And now it's now it's right side up so I can texture easier. Now since I scaled this, I'm gonna delete oops, this one. And I'll just duplicate this up here. Like so. Just double check it's looking nice, looks good. And now I've got UVs done on that one, UVs done on that one. And so now I want to do one of these poles. And I'm not going to change the shape of these poles, so what I'll do is, when I'm done with this one, I'll copy the UVs to the other one, and I'll show you how to do that without duplicating. So this one actually looks pretty good for the auto map, except that I've still got seams, a bunch of seams. So if I try to paint this, I'm going to end up a bunch of um, awkward edges here that I don't want. So I can just go in and sew these edges together. I'm not too concerned about these end pieces. Um, there's not really much else you can do with them. You could go in and decide to, un like, I could go in and select all these and cut them, and then select all my edges here, and then move and sew, and I'm going to get this deal here. I mean, you're still going to have seams, and then when you try to paint these seams, it's going to be all messed up. So it's kind of like choosing the lesser of two evils, and this to me is the, the best way to do it. Um, so yeah, I would just leave them like that. Now of course, now that I've sewn these together, I still want to double check that these are unfolded right, so I'm going to click there. And of course that decides to turn on me. Um, I can't remember if you can do it in here. It doesn't look like you can. Maybe it's in Legacy. Nah. Okay. So because that unfolded on me all weird, I mean, really the best way to do it is just to come back in and select it again, or rotate it back how you want it. And it looks like it actually cleaned up those edges pretty nice for me. But it's still not going to be perfect. And in this case, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. I'm not going to worry about going in and clean up those edges because it actually looks pretty nice and clean right now. It looks nice and straight across. The bottom's a little bit not straight, but it's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so the last thing I want to do is uh, I need to copy these UVs across here. So what I'm going to do is select the, the one with the UVs, shift select the one without the UVs. I'm going to go up to Mesh, Transfer Attributes, hit my 
uh, option box here. Make sure all this stuff's lined up. I want UV sets all, everything else is off. And then down here, I want component. Um, and that should be it, and hit apply. And what that did, if it works correctly, is yep, it copied my UV straight across. Now I want to I want to point something out. I have this scaled up weird, um, and it's actually sticking out of the UV space, and you do not want to do that. Um, I don't have these lined up very well yet because I'm going to use a cheating trick to set these up easier. Um, so I'm going to go in here and select you know, object mode, all these. I can close this. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to go into shell mode here, and if you actually this is an important lesson. This is called texel density. And as you can see, my checker pattern right here is really, really small here and nice and clean and really blown up here. And what that means is if I try to add a texture on here, it's going to look nice and crisp here and really blown up and blurry up here. And I don't want that. I want this to be all the same so all my texture lines up nice. Now in hand-painted textures, um, you actually can customize this or change it a little bit more. With PBR, you kind of want it to be pretty, pretty even. Um, like something in Substance Painter, you probably want this to be pretty even so it looks nice all around. But there are times when you might want to actually make something a little less detailed so you can get more detail somewhere else. A good example of like this of this is like a character. If you were to hand paint a character, you might want to make his face um, have a has smaller textures so you can get more detail in it. So you blow that up in your UV space and then the rest of his body a little bit smaller so you have more detail in his face and less everywhere else. Um, so for now, let's just even this out. And the, the nicest way, to, or the easiest way to even it out is just to click this button right here, this UV, or Layout UVs button, and that just automatically lays out your UVs nice and neat for you, so you don't have to worry about going in and adjusting them all manually. And they are all the same size now, even though it doesn't quite look like it in here, they are all the same size UVs, or the same size checkerboard, or checker pattern, and they're all set up right. Um, so. Uh, the next thing I want to do is actually create a high poly for this mesh. So I've got my UVs laid out. Now what I need to do is I'm going to um, create a layer out of these. And if you're in the channel box here, you can click this little circle here when you have your objects selected and it'll, and it'll create a new layer and add your objects to it. I'm going to double click this and call this L for layer underscore low poly. And save that. And then I'm going to duplicate this and click that again. Double click and L underscore high poly. And save that. All right, so now I've got two, or a, a duplicate of both of these. They both got UVs, even though UVs on the high poly don't matter at all. You don't need UVs on your high poly, just your low. So I'm going to hide my low poly. So I only have my high, my high right here. Now I'm going to go in and create my high poly out of these. So I can move this out of the way because I need it again. I don't want to close it right now. And the first thing I want to do is add a bevel to the edge of this. Actually, you know what? Let me show you why I want to do that. So if I hit three on my keyboard, it's going to show me my three key smoothed mode. And what that does is it basically just takes all the edges here on there it looks actually just fine. It takes all my edges here, it just rounds them out and kind of balances it out. And if I look at this, why didn't close this? Turn this off. If I look at this in four mode, you can see what's going on is I actually have curved edges and that's not really possible with polygons. So it's, you can tell that you're in three mode and it's just a fake um, preview mesh basically because of that, because you have those curved edges and you don't want those. But what I'm trying to do is actually get to the point where my three key looks how I want it to look in game, basically. So if I hit one again, I can go back out of my three key. I hit five to get out of my, um, my uh, wireframe mode. And so now what I want to do is in order to create uh, or get this to be not so rounded off because that's not what wood looks like and this going to be a wooden staff. I want those to look like that. I'm going to add that bevel. I just click the bevel button there. And if I hit three now, it looks a little better. It's still not quite what I want. Go back to one. I'm going to go in into my bevel under my channel box and adjust my fraction a little bit. I don't want it that big. 
still doesn't look great. It's looking better though. And then just to make sure it doesn't stretch quite as much, I'm gonna go in and add another edge loop down here and that should clean it up to how I want it. That looks pretty good. Now I want it to be pretty loose right here because I want to get this, this light across it. If I make it too tight, it'll be really narrow. So to, what happens is if I drag this up here real tight, like so, and let's just say I wanna make this even tighter, I can drag this down and scale it out and get it real nice and tight right up against there. Now what happens is when I zoom out here, it looks nice in here and it looks really, really crisp. But I actually want it to be a little bit smoother than that because I want to be able to see it from further away in game and get that nice, nice uh, rim lighting across there. Okay. So what I want to do is Z back because I don't want those edges to be that tight. I like it quite a bit like that. I think from further away you can see that nice light on the edge of it. This looks good. Um, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And what I could do is just uh, add a, an edge through here and duplicate it across, but I'm not going to do that because I've already done my low poly and I've already UV'd it. Um, so keep in mind that there's a couple different workflows to, to do this, and one of them is to do your high poly first. In fact, I usually do my high poly first and then create a low poly or a game res out of that. Um, but sometimes it's just simpler to start with a low res or a low poly if you already know what you're what you're going to do. And it's not something too complicated. Um, so I'm going to bevel this one. And these can be different too. It's They don't have to be exactly the same. In fact, I kind of want them a little bit different so they show up a little different in game. I'll just throw it right there. Just double check that it looks how I want it to look. It looks pretty good. So that's nice and smooth. Lines up really well with my cloth wrap here that I've got. Cool, now let's do the same thing on this side. And uh, just just so you know, sometimes, uh, or normally what you'd wanna do is if you wanted this to be tighter, you'd actually grab these faces here and then um, just extrude them inward like so and you'd have that nice uh, face there. Of course, it's the same thing as beveling. You just have to move it back to where it goes um, and so that's actually why I'm just beveling it instead. Um, and I want I want it to be kind of curvy and shapey instead of just a flat edge there. Sometimes when you're working with these uh, sp like long shapes, you're gonna your your camera's gonna be all messed up. And th the best way to fix that is just to select the vert you're, you're gonna be looking at or near them. And then just hit F and it'll frame in on them so that when you start panning around and it's it's it just fits better on the screen and the camera starts working better. Think about this. These uh sliders is sometimes they just snap when you're not like you you've got it where you want it and you hit the you release the key and then it snaps back to where you, you had it before and it's really frustrating. Anyway, okay, so that, that's those. They're looking good. Um, I don't have a whole lot of detail in them. I did. Ha I do have some curvature in the, the low poly, but you don't really see it in the high poly. Now, that's fine because remember your silhouette's gonna stay the exact same as how your low poly looks. So when I look at my low poly, um, you're not gonna see these edges in here. In fact, I can go in and soften those edges so you can't see them but that's what it's gonna look like low poly. So it won't be, it won't, I mean, it's got a little bit of curve to it, so it's got, it's not perfectly straight up and down, um, but it's not anything serious and it, that's, it's fine. All right, so I need to do these. And honestly, these actually look pretty good in, in smooth mode. Uh, I'm probably not gonna do much with them. They actually look pretty good. I'm happy with them. So, yeah, I think they're okay. All right, so now I've got a high poly, um, but it's only in, it's only in preview mode right now. So if I uh, if I tried to export this out, you just go back to to one mode, which isn't what I want. So how I how I fix this is first first of all, I'm just gonna merge them together into one 
object. Actually, I'm not going to do that. You can. It doesn't really matter. I'm just not going to for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is go to, up to here to modify, um, convert, and I want to do uh, smooth mesh preview to polygons. Now, if you have a, a bigger model, it's going to take a little longer, take a little bit to do that. But now I've got polygons, which means it's not smooth. It's this is actually how it works and how it looks, and you can tell by looking at the polygons and seeing that they're actually polygons in that curvy, strange shapes. All right, so there's my low poly or my high poly. Now another thing I want to do is name these. So this is going to be um, pull one underscore high, and I'm. You want to make sure that, the, that your naming conventions are always the same. It can be whatever you can call it, pole underscore high poly, HI, capital HI, doesn't matter, but capitalization does matter, and you need to make sure that underscore is there to, um, to separate it out. And this one's going to be pull uh, two, I think. After I told you how important naming was, I forgot it was what, what I named the first one. So pull one pull two high. And this is going to be wrap one high, and this is going to be wrap two high. And now I need to name these ones on my low poly the exact same things. So pull one low, oops, but with the low suffix instead. Pull two low. I think I did it this way. Wrap one low. Wrap two low. And I'll just double check that. So wrap two low. Wrap two high. Okay, so now I've got everything named correctly. Uh, I'm going to go in and delete history. And um, it's not centered, but that's fine. Freeze transforms. Sorry about that pop up. Delete history and freeze transforms. Okay, so now let's export. So I'm going to export just to my desktop. Um, I'll put it under UV tutorial. And that's not necessarily UV tutorial, and we're going to call this um, uh, bow staff underscore low. And I'm going to do this as an OBJ, and I'm just going to make sure all this is turned on. And do the same thing with my high, and I'll just call this, oh, that's not it. Bow staff high. Export. All right, so now I've got a low poly and a high poly. Let's open up Substance Painter here. File new. Sorry, you couldn't see that menu. Uh, template's fine. We don't need a template. I'm going to select the mesh here. Uh, boy. Um, nope. Select low. I'm going to do a 24. Let's just do 1024 for now. We can change that later. All right, so now I've got it moved in here. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to point out that I didn't say anything about um, is before you bring in your low poly, you want to make sure that all of your edges are um, softened. In fact, I don't think I did that on my wraps, so I'm going to export this again. Post staff low, replace it open up substance and what you can do is instead of just making a new uh, uh, a whole new or file new hip here you can go to edit project configuration and I can just select that staff again hit open uh, okay and that'll replace it for me and that'll actually keep all your textures now you can see I don't have the hard edge that'll keep all of your textures your layers um, your bakes even everything will be in there the same so you can do some tricky stuff with that um, okay, now what I want to do is come over here and bake textures. 
Now, because I have a high poly, I can do all of these, even though they have warning signs. I just need to go in and choose my output size. I need to choose my high poly in here. So both stuff underscore high. And now you can see it says high instead of having warning signs. That's nice. And then one more thing I want to do is because I renamed all those meshes, all those objects, and I uh, changed them uh, or made them all separate pieces when I exported them, is I want to make sure I go up to match by mesh name. And what that's going to do is it's going to check the mesh name for every piece um, inside of your model that you've exported and line them up with the other ones. So it'll line up your underscore lows with your underscore highs, and you can change those here if you change them, made them, name them something else. That's why I kept them underscore capital or lowercase high underscore lowercase low. Um, so anyway, it's going to find those and then bake the meshes according to those so you don't have any overlapping and, and any issues like that. So this is all good. I'm just going to hit bake. And I should have added a different texture set to those. And I might run into an error because of that. Doesn't look like it. Looks like we baked OK. I've got a line there that I don't want. And some strange dimples up there that I don't want. Further away, it looks OK, though. It's just up close. So let's double check that everything else looks okay before we go in and see if we can fix those. Sometimes you just run into those errors. And one way to fix it will be to bevel my low poly. It's a pain to get around long meshes like this in Substance Painter. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is try to bevel those edges in my low poly. Now it adds a lot more polygons which I don't want to do, but it's better than um, having it look like garbage. That's fraction 0 0.2. 0 0.2. I'm just going to double check my high poly, make sure there's nothing weird going on with that, and there isn't. So I don't know where those dimples came from. I'm just going to soften those edges again. Uh, delete history. Oh, delete history on all of it. And then export it one more time. You're going to run into all kinds of strange issues like this when you're exporting, uh, or when you're baking. It just happens and it's kind of hard to avoid. So I need to go in project configuration. I'm at the bake again. So I could have just done a whole new project file, which would have been fine. See now I've got some weird issues there. So I need to go in and rebake. I should be good. I'm actually gonna turn on anti-aliasing. I'll just do two two by two. And anti-aliasing, what that's going to do is actually just clean up those edges of my normal maps so that I don't have any of that, that weird stair stepping. And hopefully that'll clean up that edge a little better. Perfect. So I've got that nice smooth edge on there now. No real issues with it. Looks like this one's good too. There's a little bit of an edge there that I'm not happy with, but it's it's fine. You'll never see it with the texture on here. So that's that's basically it. That's your low poly to high poly workflow um, through Maya. Of course, you could have just imported that same OBJ, that, that high poly OBJ right into ZBrush and started sculpting on it and added those that extra detail into your cloth wraps or whatever you wanted to do. But if you're just trying to get something done and you don't want to sculpt on it or you just you don't need to sculpt on it then this is this will work great